April 27, Children of a Singing God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Mark 14, 26. Can you hear Jesus singing? Was he a bass or a tenor? Was there a down-home twang to his voice? Or was there an unwavering crystal pit? Did he close his eyes and sing to his Father? Or did he look into his disciples' eyes and smile at their deep camaraderie? Did he usually start the song? Or did Peter or James or maybe Matthew do it? Oh, I can hardly wait to hear Jesus sing. I think the planets would be jolted out of orbit if he lifted his native voice in our universe. But we have a kingdom that cannot be shaken. So Lord, go ahead, do it, sing. It could not be otherwise, but that Christianity be a singing faith. The founder sang, he learned to sing from his father. Surely they have been singing together from all eternity. Don't you think so? Would not infinite eternal happiness in the fellowship of the Trinity sing? The Bible says the aim of our singing is to raise sounds of joy, 1 Chronicles 15, 16. No one in the universe has more joy than God. He is infinitely joyful. He has rejoiced from eternity in the panorama of his own perfections reflected perfectly in the deity of his Son. God's joy is unimaginably powerful. He is God. When he speaks, galaxies come into being. And when he sings for joy, more energy is released than exists in all the matter and motion of the universe. If he appointed song for us to release our heart's delight in him, is this not because he also knows the joy of releasing his own heart's delight in his own image, in his Son, by his Spirit, in song? We are a singing people because we are the children of a singing God.